I made a lot of these videos early in the morning for this, the last like five or six videos, so I apologize for any mistakes I make, um, including the lining up of this, but anyway. So we go on to talk about the different empires and how they fit together. I found a perfect map for it, and I found several different maps. I think I'm just going to share this one with you today. I was going to show you the symbol of Thai and how that goes in, but anyway. So we go on, and as you can see, you have the 2112 is when you have your Girion invasion. This is BCE. 2200 is when you have the Amorites. 1595, you have the Hittites sacking Babylon. 1200, you have Armenians, or Arameans, excuse me. 1159, you have BCE, of course, you have Elamite invasion. 750 BCE, Chaldean invasion. 613 BCE, you have Medes. Now, if you look at the timelines, and notice that Com it's important to note that Comrade's Code was in 2300. And if you compare that to when Sargon was, he was before that. So I've had I've seen different dates on different timelines where Hammurabi was actually earlier than that. But it's you know, it does matter, but I'm gonna put him at two thousand three hundred. Okay, then you had um Marduk is referenced, of course, in the Kamarad Accord. Remember, if you look at the Bab let's, let's start with the Babylon. Let's keep it simple, because obviously you have the Sumerians first, the Ubaid culture, Uruk, etc., and then Sumerian states, and then you have Sargon in his description. He's talking about the black-headed people of Sumer and how he manages to rule over them, and so you have Babylon and this the Akkadians, you know, Sargon's period, right, when he unites the two lands. And then you have the Amorites and you have the Kassites. So that when the Kassites are ruling Babylon in this period, there's a lot of correspondence with Egypt that's been found. It's also important to note that when we're talking about the Assyrians, they also had a dynasty in uh, Babylon. I don't know why it's not on this list, but they also were ruling there for a while. And the Persians... There's a lot of correspondence found between the Syrians, the Persians, the Syrians, the Babylonians, and Egypt, you know, as well. There's inscriptions of Amenhotep the Fourth. Um, as we go on to talk about how the different empires work together, and how there's, I found a claim where this guy said the Hiskos was from the Arabian Desert, and that they're a Semitic tribe. This seems to be the popular, popular opinion of the Hiskos. I agree. And I'm not sure how dark their skin were, but I, I, I suppose it's fair to say that they're light skinned due to um, when I look at the inscriptions on the pyramid text, it appears that they, they probably were light skinned people. And they invaded Egypt in the 15th dynasty. So, anyway, we, as we go on to talk about also the Hittites, you know, the, the Battle of Kadesh, the Hittites, uh, the Egyptians with the Hittites, of course. And so, you know, that plays into the timeline and where the Hittites sacked Babylon as well. So, remember that not only are these people in another place, there's correspondence between that place, there's art evidence, there's etymolo etymological evidence, there's anthropological evidence. Paleontologists have dug up quite a bit of it, anthropological evidence. There's evidence in the form of weapons and tools. So we talk about the Babylonian gods like Baal and we talk about uh, Nineveh, Nanar, Utu, you know, the different gods that were African gods that went to Babylon that I referenced in my first video, I believe it was. And you look at how the Akkadians had their part, you know, there's Akkad and how they united it, Sargon, and how the Assyrians are above them, the Persians to the right, the Arabian Desert below them, and then you have the Caspian Sea, the Persian Sea, or excuse me, the Persian Gulf, and the Red Sea, okay? So all these things are important to note. It's also important to note that the people on both sides of the Red Sea had contact with each other, and they were 
capable of conspiring with each other to figure out what is going on. So as you have the different dynasties and the different empires, the Persian dynasty, for example, you have um, Darius, Xerxes, Artaxerxes, okay? They have a great empire. They clash with the Greeks. You know that, that movie they made about it um, where they have 300, where they exaggerated. They didn't exaggerate the part about the guy running to warn the people. There was a guy who actually ran that distance. And there was a battle like that, and the people were slaughtered. But it wasn't as glorious as they would have you believe. But anyway, also, it downplays the Persians' capability. They were stretched out. They had to worry about resources. But they could have taken over Greece at that point if they chose that path. Not saying the Greeks weren't great fighters. They, of course, had great armies. You know, the, Sparta, the Spartans were ready to fight. And if we look at... Of course, you know, like the, when the Vikings invaded England, there was many great battles fought in Europe, and it plays in history, but it plays in history later. If you realize that the Europeans were already there, they were these nomadic tribes, the people who took the greatest part of history were the Africans, and the Akkadians were closely related to the Africans. And there were certain tribes that mixed more with the black people. Let's, let's say that his coast mixed a lot with the Africans, and that's why you got the Arabs, for example. Okay, let's say that is a, a, an example. So, how much time I got? I got about three minutes left. Okay. So remember, Abraham was born in Chaldea in Ur, and the Chaldeans are over here in 606, right? And that's when they have their empire in Babylon. But they're also present in Babylon before that. They're present all the way, pretty much all the way back, as far as it goes. Also, it's important to notice that around 500 BCE, you had the captivity of Judah by the Babylonians. And remember, um, there were several destructions of the temple, temples being destroyed. Remember, Rome doesn't fall till 476 AD. So when you have the temples, all the damage they did, you know, all the damage that was done by Trajan, Hadrian, and Constantine, and even though know, he did a lot of good too, there was a lot of damage done. And so when we talk about, you know, we go back to the Olympic Games in 776 BCE, for example, what are these based on? These are based on Babylonian and, and Egyptian competitions chariot races, horse races. Well, why, why are they doing this? Because the people on the Red Sea, on both sides, they shared a similar culture and they traded goods a lot. So this part when I say that there was, a, there was a certain element of friendly trade and then there was the white people coming in and fighting with all the Arabs on the way in and then fighting with the Africans and um, that wasn't friendly. And there was the Persians and the Assyrians. If you look at the map, I don't know how well it shows up on this thing, but over here is the Assyrians, right? They're coming down, and they're fighting with people over here. They're fighting. They invade Babylon. They sack Babylon, okay? The Hittites, they're over here. They, they're, they're fighting with the Battle of Kadesh. When the Egyptians come up and fight with them, they're fighting there. They invade Babylon in um, 1595 BCE. And if you look at Akkadia, Akkad, they unite Babylon right here. You see all the way down to Ur, Uruk, uh, Upper Lower Mesopotamia. And then the Babylon becomes a great empire, and they build the Tower of Babel, etc. They have the Persians. They come all the way across here. They're fighting their way through here. All the way, by the time they get on the map to Greece, they've fought in their way through quite a bit of armies. And they're stretched, their army is stretched thin. Their resources are stretched thin. And they're trying to build their empire before they can match. So they're at a point in their attack where they weren't consolidated enough. Their infrastructure wasn't built up enough, or they would have advanced in, into Greece. So I'm going to stop it there.